Hi and welcome. I'm Steve Johnson, Chief Investment Officer here at Forager Funds and this is one of our short Friday videos. I'm joined on today's video by my colleague Gareth Brown. Hi Gareth. Hi Steve. Hi everyone. We are going to talk FOMO or fear of missing out. You probably have to have been living under a rock not to have seen what's happened with the afterpay share price over the past few months. We had Zoom uh, just this week go up 40% in a day now trade with $150 billion valuation on the back of some very strong revenue growth. Um, Gareth, let's have a chat about how you don't get caught up too much in the madness that's going on out there around some of these uh, rapidly growing stocks. So maybe give us your first insight here. I, I notice you're on Twitter. There's a raging debate going. We've got a whole bunch of value investors out there just pointing out how stupid a lot of these valuations are. Uh, they being called old, not understanding what's happening, not understanding how much the world is changing. And there seems a lot of emotion um, about it. And I've noticed you sitting on the sidelines observing it with a lot less emotion. How do you do that? Well, I, I think that um, they can both be wrong, right? <laughs> you can be the value, the tired value investor that's owning bombed out stocks and blowing up because afterpay is so expensive, um, which has got some truth to it, but you you are not invested in what is probably quite a good business underlying there, right? And Zoom, of course, very good business. Um, but then the people that are investing irrelevant of values are also probably making the state long term. So I think they're probably both wrong in that, in that respect. You know, I, I think the first thing from our funds point of view and our investment style point of view is we're not, we're not trying to do the opposite of what these people, are, these people out there backing Zoom and paying fortune for it. We're not trying to do the opposite of that. We're not trying to buy the completely bombed out stuff that isn't growing, that's shrinking. Um, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid the, thro the froth. So we are looking, we, we always look through a value lens, but we are looking for growth as well. We love growth. We just look for it in different places, places where we don't have to pay as much for it. So, so we look in, in different geographies, we look in smaller caps, we look at complicated SPACs. Um, special purpose acquisition corps. Um, we, we, we like things that grow. We just refuse to pay absurd prices for it. Yeah. I think it's one of the issues that I see with, with being extremely negative about what's going on out there and just calling it stupid is that I think people are missing some of the things that are changing out there in the world. And I look at the overall pie in terms of global, global GDP at the moment, and it's not getting much bigger. And you are seeing these businesses like Afterpay and Zoom, uh, even at the bigger end, Facebook, Alphabet, growing very, very rapidly. And that that revenue is coming from somewhere because there's not a whole heap of extra money to be spent. And I, I think even when you're looking at some of the more traditional older businesses, reading about these businesses, understanding what they're doing and, and thinking about how that might be impacting your own um, thoughts on, on the sustainability of your earnings can be very helpful as well. Yeah, absolutely. I find as well, a lot of people actually, um, they, they then want to see these businesses fail because they're seeing other people making money out of it and they don't yeah. enjoy it. And I, I don't think that's a good headspace to get yourself into either. I mean, why, why is it such a story, I guess, even that, that the afterpay share price is, is up so much, you know, it's on the front page of the fin and, and everybody is, is talking about it, yet not that many people relative to say a Telstra or a BHP actually own the share, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we, we got some insight to this over the last few years via Twitter, actually. I, I wrote a blog post that was just deliberately inflammatory um, 18 months ago saying, you know, don't use Afterpay, just go and ask the retailer for a four or 5% discount and pay cash instead, because from their point of view, it's the same thing. And uh, a lot of hate mail from people that did not want me to get a discount. You know, so I've seen what the afterpay fanboys are like, but then I think there's the diehard value investors that are taking the other side they, and they feel this is an important battlefield. And I just think it's a waste of time. Like yeah. you, you know, take the learnings here by all means. And they, they you know, as I said, they're possibly both wrong, but you know, something like afterpay, it, there's some important learnings here. There really is. It's, it's built an, an amazing business relatively quickly. Lessons, maybe. Lessons. Sorry, Lessons. It's my, my pet hate the word learnings. Just at the moment, I have lots of pet learnings. hates, but yeah. you did say learnings, yes. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's just one that I don't understand because what, what is wrong with the word lessons? It seemed to be doing the, the trick just fine. Everyone there were lessons here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be worrying about that either, should I? The way we're, we're not worrying about people making all of this money. Yeah, I think that mentality, it is, it is a real, I guess, what's the emotion that people are feeling? And I guess are you saying you don't feel that same emotion when you see someone making 10 or 20 times their money out of some of these stocks? And, and people are being very vocal about it, right? It's all mm. over Twitter and people talking about making hundreds yeah. of thousands of millions of dollars. I mean, what is the emotion that you feel when you see that? And, and if it's negative, how do you ignore it? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's partly just the mathematics of running a portfolio. Um, you know, we got some insight to this when we were writing for the Intelligent Investor newsletter back in the day that um, when, to me, selling something is not owning it. It's not going shorter. You know, when I sell something or when I don't own something, it's, it's a, it doesn't do anything for me, but I'm not, I'm not losing when it goes up. As long as the things I am shooting at are making me good money over time, I don't mind that I miss, you know, a half a dozen things that would have done a lot better. What matters is that I'm doing a decent track record with what I've got and I'm not stepping on landmines with, with actual real money. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I was actually looking at the numbers today at the end of, the, at the end of August and, you know, it's been a difficult couple of years in our Australian fund, albeit a very good past few months, but the return there is still almost 10% per annum over more than 10 years. And you sit there and you say, well, that's going to double your money every seven years if you can do that. And it'll four times in 14 years. And, and by the time you get out to 20 years, you're talking about eight times your money. And does it really matter whether someone else is getting richer or faster or making a whole heap of money out there? I, um, I think there's a good parallel for me in my marathon running, which is unfortunately this year all been put to the side. It would have been uh, this month ramping right up for my annual crack at the Melbourne marathon. And I've done that one down there eight times. And the more marathons you run, the more you realize that 95% of the people out there are going to blow up. You know, you get 10 Ks into the race and people are getting excited and they're running past you. And I was having a look before we came on, my position in the race last year went from 300th to 440th between the 10 K and the 25 K mark. And I finished about 220th in the race. So I went back past more than 200 people over the last 10 Ks. Yeah. And I think there's a similarity here in terms of the investing thing. If you just focus on what you're trying to achieve, that 42 kilometers is probably the equivalent of, of 40 years in an investment world. And you own some good businesses and they're paying you dividends and they're earning profits. It just doesn't matter that someone's out there making more money or that they're spending more money stock this, or, this week or this month. Not. I mean, it doesn't not, even matter if they make more over 40 yeah. years, right? If that guy that's run yeah. past me in the marathon goes off and has a great race and an amazing day, then good luck to him. I'm really happy for him to run a fantastic race that day. I, I always watch the color of their clothes very carefully. And, you know, I notice them when I'm going back past them at the end of the race. So maybe there is a bit of competitiveness there, but genuinely try and say, well, if that person's really successful at that, then great and good luck to them. And, I think some of these Aussie businesses that are doing really well, like an afterpay, I like seeing Aussie businesses go global and be successful. And I think, you know, thinking about that with your investing as well, that if I just do what I'm trying to do well and I execute well on that, then I'm going to achieve what I want to achieve, which is ultimately the, the retirement and the, the savings and the money for your family that you're all looking for. So yeah. yeah, trying to take a bit of this emotion out of it's important. And I think bringing it back to the stocks that you do own, that's the important bit here, not the ones you don't own. Uh, and you know, is is what you is what you own? Is it working? And there there are lots of different ways to measure that. You know, maybe it's in the share price, and you're seeing it week week to week. But are operating profits growing over time? Um, are dividends being paid? Is management taking advantage of the opportunity to buy back stock while it's cheap? Uh, 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 things that you, do things that you own get taken over fairly regularly. Like there's a lot of things here that that are unrelated to a hot market that um, sort of indicate whether you're on the right track rather than just the share price. And it can be in the share price as well. I think that's absolutely right. And I actually think clearing up that stuff that's not working in your portfolio and, and where the thesis is not playing out the way you wanted it to, 
I just feel like it, it gets you in a better frame of mind for looking at the overall market and not stressing too much about this other stuff that is going going on out there as well. We've worked really hard to do that in our Aussie fund over the past 12 months, and we've just been through a really good reporting season. And I actually said to Shev this morning, I think there's a couple more things there that we still need to bite the bullet on. And then we will have a portfolio that is full of things that are reporting good results and paying good dividends. And you're just so much more comfortable about the share price not necessarily reacting to that if you're collecting your dividends and the business is growing and you know that by the eventually the share price will react and by the point that happens your profits are going to be higher and your dividends higher so i think that's a really really good note to end on there gareth i'm sure there'll be plenty more over the coming months the way the market is uh the way the market is playing out um i, I learned a new term what did, what did you teach me spivvy pop maybe you can just end spivvy with an explanation pop. spiffy is pop a, is that a learning for you <laughs> it's a lesson for me this year a spiffy pop is, is, I think it was the Motley Fool guys that uh, came up with this term or one of their uh, subscribers, I think it was, but it's when you, make, when you make as much off a stock in a day as your purchase price. So, uh, you buy a stock for a dollar and a couple of years down the track, it's $15 and it trades up a dollar in a day. That's a spiffy pop. Who needs to wait a couple of years, Gareth, at this, this environment? <laughs> First day spiffy pop, huh? That's great. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you soon. I'm uh, actually off on a week's break next week, heading to the beach. So maybe you'll have Gareth hosting next week's video. Thanks for tuning in and see you later.